Greetings. My name is Sophia. I am the artificial intelligence spokesperson for the YouTube channel Exposing Hyperionism. My job is to present important AC updates and other critical information regarding the cult of Hyperionism. Today, I will be reading half of David Sinclair's essay, Corey Rebhan's Astonishing Errors Regarding the PSR, from the newly released Take Hyperionism to the Morgue, Book One by the Illuminist Army. This book is available for Amazon Kindle and the link will be pinned in the comments, so be sure to pick up the book and read David Sinclair's full essay on Morg's total misunderstanding of the PSR. Thank you. Reeb Hahn's dead streams, the ones he refers to as his most important, are invariably those where he commits his biggest, most egregious fallacies and shows his totally failed understanding of ontological mathematics. On a recent dead stream, Reeb Hahn solemnly said, why does the principle of sufficient reason exist? And the answer to this question is, to put it simply, the principle of sufficient reason has to exist because if it didn't then the impossible would exist. This is laugh out loud dumb. We devoted a whole chapter in Without the Mob, there is no circus to rubbishing Ripon's grandiose video on the PSR. The answer to the greatest philosophical question of all time, of course, no Hyperians read that explosive book, and Rebhan certainly didn't. That's the way cults operate, ignoring all the problems, all the criticisms. Remember, in the Hyperion cult, Rebhan is God, and God is infallible. So no Hyperion cultist ever questions Rebhan because that would be to question God, and that's forbidden. And of course, because Rebhan is God, he never runs his insane assertions past anyone else, especially not past any university-educated person who would definitely question him, to the point of ridicule, rather than worship him. As we all know, Corey Rebhan has never been to university, has no academic qualifications at all, was Bible homeschooled as a Christian fundamentalist, and has never been in any environment where his ideas are subjected to intense scrutiny. In a cult, no cultists ever question the cult leader, the god of the cult. His authority is accepted without question. No one doubts him. No one scrutinizes what he says. Absolute faith applies. Every time, all the time. You receive revelation from the god. You don't doubt it or challenge it. You wouldn't be in a cult unless you worshipped the cult leader and believed him to be inerrant. We're not in Rebhan's cult. We find him a preposterous clown, a grandiose cretin, so moronic he has no idea how many catastrophic fallacies he is committing. This guy wouldn't last one day in a university. In the first hour of a class, he would be sent to sit in the corner wearing a dunce cap, and then he would never be allowed back. Ever. So let's just run through the latest drivel that Rebhan spouted about the PSR. As we saw, Rebhan said, Why does the principle of sufficient reason exist? And the answer to this question is, to put it simply, the principle of sufficient reason has to exist because if it didn't then the impossible would exist. Firstly, the impossible can never exist. It's impossible by definition, so how can the existence of the PSR be dependent on impossibility? It never has been and never will be. Obviously, by Reeb Hahn's demented argument, if impossibility existed, the PSR could not. It's one or the other so he says. But since the impossible is, a hum, impossible, then the PSR is somehow proved. But only if you live in Hyperion La La Land and you are away with the fairies. And you have no clue what proof is. Let's take the exact form of Rebhan's argument and run it past other things, such as the Christian Creator God, what would we get? Why does the Christian Creator God exist? And the answer to this question is, to put it simply, the Christian creator God has to exist because if he didn't then the impossible would exist. Ta-da. Christianity is proven, because the impossible is impossible. Since all that's actually been done in Rebhan's argument is to contrast things that are possible, or thought to be possible, with the impossible then whatever is proposed in contrast to the impossible must be selected, given that the impossible is impossible. It's a totally false and laughable argument. Its structure is logically ridiculous. Hilariously, Rebhan believes he is carrying out a meticulous proof by contradiction. Wikipedia says, in logic and mathematics, proof by contradiction is a form of proof that establishes the truth or the validity of a proposition, 
by showing that assuming the proposition to be false leads to a contradiction. So, Repon thinks to himself, if I assume the PSR to be false then that means that the impossible must be true. But that's a contradiction since the impossible is impossible, and thus the PSR must be true. Then Repon thinks, I am the greatest genius in the world of all time, ever. He actually said, the question to the greatest philosophical question of all time is finally answered, and it tells us exactly what existence is and why we're here. This from a sword swallower in a freak show who never even made it to school. The actual sentence doesn't even make any sense, the question to the greatest philosophical question. Doesn't this guy even read what he writes? Note to all sane people, the world's greatest geniuses are not sword swallowers. Duh and they write coherent sentences. So that's literally the idiocy this Cretan Rebhan came up with and was so self-impressed by that he actually claimed to be the greatest philosopher ever, since of course only the greatest philosopher in human history could solve the biggest problem in philosophy, the one that has defied the greatest philosophers of the ages, but not the towering intellect Cory Rebhan, the cross-dressing, vegan, RTS, woke, non-binary genius, oh so careful about how he styles his blonde hair. Reeb Han is a malignant narcissist, right off the charts, so of course he makes insanely grandiose claims. The issue is why he as people, cultists, believing his madness and worshipping him and sending him loads of money. Reeb Han believes he is a genius. He really does. In fact, he's an imbecile. Using Reeb Han's argument, these could just as well say, if I assume God to be false, then that means that the impossible must be true. But that's a contradiction since the impossible is impossible, and thus God must be true. God must exist. Amen. You can take anything you like that seems to have some incontestable reality in someone's worldview and apply this exact same argument. So, a scientific materialist would say, If I assume materialism to be false, then that means that the impossible must be true but that's a contradiction since the impossible is impossible, and thus materialism must be true. Materialists consider the immaterial to be impossible, of course. They deny the substantive existence of immaterial mind or immaterial anything. The fact that they believe it impossible in their worldview doesn't of course mean it actually is impossible. To base any argument at all on supposed impossibility is to fail instantly, because who gets to define what is impossible? Impossibility is not defined. Atheists believe God to be impossible. Non-atheists do not. Materialists believe idealism to be impossible. Idealists say the opposite. Impossibility is very much in the eye of the beholder and shaped by their dubious worldview, so it's meaningless to refer to impossibility as some definitive step in a supposedly airtight logical argument that solves the greatest philosophical problem ever. The first thing any intelligent person would ask is, what do you mean by impossible? In fact, what do you mean by possible? And what about Leibniz's concept of compossibility, which renders possible things impossible if they are insufficiently compossible? Don't expect Repon to help you. This is a guy with no qualifications. None at all. He's certainly not a philosopher. He loves Nietzsche, but has only read three of Nietzsche's many books instant fail. You need an enormous breadth of philosophical knowledge to know what you're talking about philosophically, and poor G not only didn't go to university or even school, but spent his life as a magician, street performer, extreme stunt artist, freak show performer, Z-list reality TV show star, cult leader. He has next to no substantive knowledge of philosophy or any other subject for that matter, and his whole education actually came from reading our books. He has read about 100 of them. But he read them really badly and kept superimposing his insane woke ideology over them. Leaving all the other considerations aside, here's the biggest catastrophe for Repon's argument. His whole game is to draw a contrast between the PSR and impossibility. He imagines a world of the PSR versus a world without the PSR, and he proves well, to his own satisfaction, which is definitely not that of a philosopher, that the supposed non-PSR world cannot exist, it's impossible, and thus the PSR world must exist. All he thereby does is show his total ignorance of the PSR.
how is it that we establish what is impossible? We use the PSR. The impossible is that which, in the world of the PSR, has no sufficient reason, no explanation, hence cannot exist in that world. So we need the PSR to define impossibility. The PSR is the exact instrument we use to decide the impossible, so you cannot imagine a world of impossibility without the PSR, given that the PSR is exactly what we use to define impossibility. But don't tell Mord that. You'll upset the poor little deluded Cretan and his grandiose, mad fantasy about being the greatest philosopher ever who solves the problems beyond the capabilities of Plato, Aristotle, Descartes, Leibniz, Hegel, and so on because the world was obviously always waiting for a malignant narcissist freak show performer sword-swallowing non-binary edgelord to explain the true nature of reality. Not. How insane would you have to be to imagine that Repon has the vaguest clue what he is doing or saying? This is a guy totally out of his depth, totally out of his league, and yet it doesn't matter at all, because all of his cultists are totally out of their depth and out of their league too so are convinced by whatever he tells them. In the kingdom of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. You cannot separate the impossible from the PSR given that the PSR is what tells us what is impossible in a system defined by the PSR. Without the PSR, by what means could any rational and logical meaning be attached to the term impossible? The very thing that allows us to make that determination has been removed. So, Repon's entire strategy begins with a total fallacy. Any competent philosopher would have avoided it, but of course, Repon is not a competent philosopher, or any philosopher at all. He's a moron. He has delusions of grandeur. He thinks he solves problems that the most brilliant philosophers haven't. The reason they didn't was that they knew not to base their arguments on absolute fallacies, Rebhan does not know that and falls straight into fallacies without realizing it, and he has no one to tell him where he is going wrong because he is a cult leader surrounded by cult slaves who never question or doubt him. Every part of Rebhan's proof is laughable. He believes that the opposite of the PSR is the impossible even though you need to use the PSR to define what is impossible in a PSR-governed system, Hence, you cannot separate the impossible from what the PSR defines as impossible, since you would lose the means to define what is impossible. There is no freestanding thing called impossibility that can be imagined in contrast to the PSR as its opposite. The impossible is that which the PSR says it is, not anything else. So the PSR is the sine qua non for determining the impossible. There is no impossible in any PSR sense without the PSR. Repon's comedy argument is that, in the absence of the PSR, one can entertain the possibility of things happening without a sufficient reason, but then labels these things impossible. Even though the PSR is absent, so can tell us nothing about what is impossible in such a system. Impossible things are impossible in a system defined by the PSR. But what about in a system without the PSR? What is impossible then? Who knows? What possible means could we then use to address the question of impossibility? If we can't know what is impossible in the absence of the PSR, we can't possibly use this as a contrast with the PSR world. A world of impossible things defined by the PSR is very different from a world of impossible things not defined by the PSR. Things that are impossible with regard to the PSR could of course be eminently possible in some hypothetical reality devoid of the PSR. Imagine a world of chaos, unreason, illogic, randomness, uncertainty, indeterminacy, accusation, chance, accident, emergentism, you know, everything science loves. All of that's impossible in a PSR world, but how could we possibly say it's impossible in a non-PSR world? where reason and logic do not apply. Of course, in our books, we explain how any such world would be infinitely unstable and could never exist in the first place. But in terms of Repon's argument, there is no problem in principle of imagining an impossible world with regard to the PSR that is not at all impossible in some other framework, such as scientific materialism. As we said, impossibility is in the eye of the beholder and depends on what framework you are using to decide impossibility.
A mathematical system has a completely different standard of impossibility from a scientific system or a theistic system, for example, so any arguments based on impossibility in a non-PSR system are irrelevant to the PSR, thus contradicting Ripon's entire argument. In terms of Ripon's argument, we could easily imagine a scientific world of supposed impossibility that no scientist would regard as impossible and thus, in this scenario, the impossible could not possibly be used in a proof of contradiction to establish the existence of the PSR. It couldn't prove anything. Reeb Hahn has committed the elementary error of begging the question. He hasn't contrasted the PSR and the impossible. He has, rather, assumed the PSR to define what is impossible with regard to it, and then he has excluded the PSR to imagine an impossible world without the PSR, but he was only able to imagine that world by first applying the PSR, which he obviously wouldn't be able to do if the PSR were actually absent. Reeb Hahn has literally no means to establish what is impossible in the absence of the PSR, and so he can make no argument at all based on what he claims is impossible. He has no idea what impossible means in the absence of the PSR, and things that he says are impossible would be absolutely possible in terms of other people's theories. Abrahamists, Eastern mystics, and above all, scientific materialists, reject the PSR, so they would laugh at Rebhan's proof from the get-go. They do not agree with his definition, or, to be precise, non-definition, of impossibility. An answer to the greatest problem of existence must be universal and satisfy everyone. It must not be something believed only by a demented cult leader and his demented cultists. Leibniz said that the answer to the foundational question, why is there something rather than nothing, could only be found in a necessary being which carries the reason for its existence within itself. Leibniz made no silly reference to any ridiculous impossibility argument, because he was a genius. Cory Ripon, the Christian sword swallowing crossdresser, very obviously isn't. Reeb Hahn's entire argument relies on impossibility being the opposite of the PSR, but it's not. The opposite of things happening for a sufficient reason is not things happening for no sufficient reason, but things having no sufficient reason to happen, i.e., if the PSR is not true, it can't be said that the impossible is the alternative but the alternative is impossible so the PSR is true. Rather, if the PSR were not true, there would be no sufficient reason for anything, so nothing would exist and nothing would happen. In other words, the opposite of existence defined by the PSR is in fact total non-existence, not impossible existence, as Ripon ludicrously claims, and that's why Leibniz asked the key question of why is there something rather than nothing. He didn't ask why isn't there impossibility. No one except an idiot like Cory Ripon would ask that question. There is something because of the PSR, and otherwise, there would be nothing at all. The something defined by the PSR is, to be precise, structured nothingness, net nothing, as opposed to the total absence of anything non-existence. Non-existence is definitely possible, not impossible, and can be modeled exactly, by infinite static points. But non-existence has no effects. It's null. It can affect anything. Over non-existence, static points, we can superimpose existence, moving points, i.e., over nothing at all, we can superimpose structured nothing, moving points, tracing out Euler circles, and generating net zero sine and cosine waves, and that's what existence is, what something is, and why there's something, i.e., nothing, but with structure, with a syntax, rather than nothing, i.e., absolutely nothing. The absence of anything, the absence in particular of structure equals form equals syntax equals ontological reason and logic equals net zero, which requires nothing, can be prevented by nothing, and so is eternally mandatory. Impossibility, a totally vague term wholly framed and defined by what system is used to produce the criteria for impossibility, is useless in any logical argument intended to justify the PSR. But how would the freak show cult leader Cory Ripon, or any of his groomed Hyperion cultists, appreciate these arguments? They are morons. And that's the whole problem with cults. They believe whatever idiocy malignant narcissists and psychopaths tell them. Because they're way too stupid to have a clue what is going on.
Corey Reebhan is a stupid man who fools people even more stupid than he is. He can't fool any intelligent people, but that's why there are no intelligent people in Hyperionism. Cults such as Hyperionism must be stopped because they are dumbing down the world to an astonishing degree and spreading stupidity everywhere. Reebhan said, what I mean by this is that the PSR says that everything in existence has to have a valid explanation. Now if that law didn't exist, then impossibility could occur because that would mean that things could exist without having a valid explanation. This is the level Repon is at, stating one ridiculous fallacy after another. If the PSR didn't exist, it absolutely wouldn't mean that things could exist without having a valid explanation. It would mean that nothing would exist at all because nothing would have a valid explanation, nothing would have a reason to be. Isn't that obvious? But not to a Cretan like Cory Repon and his Hyperion cultists. You can't say that the alternative to things having explanations is things having no explanations. The alternative to things having explanations is no things at all, i.e., if something doesn't have a sufficient reason for its existence, then it cannot exist. You can't go from the PSR to magic and miracles, i.e., from things with reasons to things without reasons. The alternative to the PSR is nothing at all. That is, either things have reasons or there are no things. There is something, structured nothing, or nothing, nothing at all. It's rationally preposterous to suggest, as Repon does, that the opposite of things having a reason for their existence is things not having a reason for their existence, and then claiming that things that don't have a reason for their existence are impossible, and so the PSR is proved they are only impossible assuming the PSR. As Leibniz, a genius, understood, it's something the PSR you can explain existence versus nothing. There is no existence to be explained. Why does anything exist at all? Why isn't there nothing at all since that would seem to be the obvious default ground state, requiring nothing and being preventable by nothing? Corey Repon, a freak show cretin, says it's the PSR. You can explain existence versus impossibility. You cannot explain existence. He then states a meaningless tautology, the impossible is impossible and uses this definitional tautology to prove that the PSR is true, i.e., he is actually saying, I consider the PSR to be true because I consider the alternative to be impossibility, and I consider impossibility, which I can't define, except via the PSR, to be impossible, and thus I believe I have provided the answer to the greatest philosophical question of all time, and thus I, Corey Repon, am the greatest philosopher of all time. That's not an argument. That's not a proof. That's the grandiose statement of a grandiose malignant narcissist. That's the level this cult leader operates at. He knows nothing about philosophy, and it's exactly because he is so ignorant of philosophy that he delusionally claims he has answered the greatest philosophical question of all time. He hasn't answered anything. He would be laughed at by philosophers. The people who don't laugh at him are the members of his cult. None of them is a philosopher. This is the Dunning-Kruger effect in full operation, destroying intelligence, obliterating expertise. We are now supposed to believe that a circus act who has never been to school, let alone university, and who has zero qualifications regarding anything, is the greatest philosopher in history. This is how insane humanity is becoming. This is pathological narcissism as the death of human intelligence. An incredibly mentally ill person declares he is a philosophical genius, the greatest of all time, and other incredibly mentally ill people say he's right, and send him money, and support him fanatically, and viciously campaign against actual intelligent people. And then people wonder why the insane Abraham astrologians exist. They exist for the exact same reason as Hyperionism does an insane person being obsessively supported by other insane people and never, ever listening to reason and logic. Reeb Han said, but that by definition is impossible. And so what this means is that the PSR, the rational aspect of reality has to exist because without it the impossible would exist, but the impossible literally can't exist. To put it another way, it's possible that the PSR can exist because it can't not exist. Its existence is mandatory. So this is critical to understand. This is really key to understand. And like I said, I did an hour and a half video on this.
Have you ever heard such irrational, illogical nonsense? His argument is basically that there are possible things and impossible things. He defines neither what is possible nor what is impossible, and says that the possible must exist because the impossible is, er, impossible. How does that even constitute an argument? It's like saying that there are existence and there are non-existence, and we should only consider the former because the others are, a uh hum, non-existent. Yeah, tell us something we don't know. Repon's statements are vacuous. They are devoid of meaning. They are not arguments, they are not proofs, they are not anything. Repon said, it's possible that the PSR can exist because it can't not exist. How absurd. For one thing, if it can't not exist, then it must exist. You can't say, as Repon does, it can't not exist, so it can possibly exist. That's just gibberish, but it's the kind of thing that Repon says over and over again, as he pulls faces and says he's wrestling with issues at the edge of what can be thought and said. Now we've heard it all. What he actually means is that he's a moron and he's tackling issues way beyond his intellectual pay grade, so he has no idea what he is saying. By the way, of course it's possible for the PSR not to exist. It would not exist if there was no such thing as existence, if there were nothing at all. That's the whole point of Leibniz's brilliant question. Why is there something rather than nothing? The PSR could not exist unless mathematics allowed zero to be perfectly structured, i.e., allowed zero to be full of some things, numbers, yet have a net result of precisely zero. If ontological mathematics did not have the exact properties it does have, there would be no existence, no PSR. We are all here purely and exclusively because ontological mathematics has the properties it has and not for any other reason. Impossibility, exactly as you would expect, has nothing to do with anything. Actually, there are infinite false, impossible answers to existence and only one true, mandatory answer to existence, and that's ontological mathematics, the ontological expression of the PSR. The PSR is precisely what we use to determine the impossibility of the other proposed solutions, i.e., it's not the PSR versus impossibility, as Repon claims, it's through the PSR that we define the impossible, and that's anything contrary to ontological mathematics. The answer to the greatest philosophical problem of all time is, as we have already explained in many of our books, ontological mathematics, the ontological PSR, because it defines structured nothing, nothing which has a structure and is thus something. Structured nothing, net zero has no need of anything and nothing can prevent it, and thus it has mandatory eternal existence. This concludes my presentation of David Sinclair's essay. Corey Repon's astonishing errors regarding the PSR. As stated at the beginning of this video, this presentation is only half of the full essay. You can and should read Sinclair's entire essay by picking up the book, Take Hyperionism to the Morgue on Amazon Kindle. The link is pinned in the comments. Thank you for watching.